Thank you very much. Um, welcome. I'm not sure what's happening here. How do I get that to... Oh, you're just... That's <laughs> <laughs> it. Um, uh, welcome. Um, my name is Alan Flemmo, CEO and co-founder of um, uh, OneCloud. And today I want to talk about building products. I want to talk about scale. And I want to do so um, sort of via the lens of my studies via the lens of philosophy, namely via the lens of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Making. Love that book. Uh, read it a, a while back and actually read it a couple of months back again. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, the book is about um, uh, a protagonist who is going to go on a road trip with his son, Chris. Um, uh, road trip, obviously, takes place on a motorcycle and is sort of meant to act as, you know, father-son quality time. Why the protagonist actually thought that, you know, the son just looking at the back of the father's helmet was quality time is kind of beyond me, but, you know, here we are. In the meantime, while not talking to his son on the motorcycle, um, what he was doing was thinking about stuff. He had the time to actually go back to his studies, uh, what he also studied was philosophy. And what he started thinking about there was, um, in essence, how you can view the world. Um, yes. How you can view the world. And you can view the world, according to him, in two distinct ways. You can view the world in a classical way, and you can view the world in a romantic way. The classical way derives from the ancient Greeks. Uh, what the ancient Greeks did to understand the world, or an attempt to understand the world, was to look at the world from the perspective of, of its particulars. Uh, the world is compounded of a lot of very small parts that have a relationship to each other, and from there you can understand the greater whole. Later, uh, during the Romantic era, we sort of said, well, you know, you can do that. Uh, you can look at the Lego bricks and try to understand the castle, but you can also just look at the castle and see it as it is, right? You can look at the meaning of whatever you're watching. Uh, when I put it in terms of motorcycles, you can try to understand a motorcycle by how, um, how much torque you need for the rear axle, what the function is of the peg, uh, how tight a motorcycle chain should be. But you can also view a motorcycle as that thing that can get you from A to B, and can do so in a very special way. Motor Cycle writers will know exactly what I mean. That is the romantic way of looking at the world versus the classic way. Now, what sort of dawned on me was that this is an awesome way to also look at software, right? Because within software, you have this way of looking at the internal workings of it. You have your code, you have your queries, you have web hooks, you have requests, and all of those things can be understood. Uh, 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 as, as particulars, as parts of the bigger whole. But you can also look at it in a romantic way. You can look at it from the perspective of its use. The use of your software is the thing that actually gives you a tool that gets you from A to B, maybe even in a special way. Um, so, why am I talking about the romantic side of software? <laughs> um, I want to talk about the romantic side of the software because of two characters in the book, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, namely John and Sylvia Sutherland. When they're on their uh, road trip across uh, the United States, uh, what at some point happens is they meet a couple. And that couple, John and Sylvia, um, they, they don't have the same interest in the mechanics and the technology behind the motorcycle. They just see the use. They are completely dependent on this motorcycle, on its proper functioning, but they do not care at all about the torque required for their axle. They don't care about what sort of tightness the chain should be. They want this motorcycle to just get them from A to B. They purely see the motorcycle in that sense from its use, not from the technological side, from the romantic side, not the structural side, right? And I want to focus on these people a little bit. Um, basically because we have those people also in the sense of people requiring websites. 
when we talk about websites, you can you can pretty easily see the internal mechanics of the website, the classic side, the technological side of it all, right? The use side of it is what gives me, the client or customer, the possibility to actually move my uh, my company forward, to evolve my company, to get from A to B with my company using this website. And to do so, I don't necessarily need to know what the underlying technology is or how it works. I can just use it as a tool, much like John and Sylvia used the motorcycle as a tool to actually get somewhere. But the interesting thing is they are not interested in technology at all. They don't want to know how everything works. They probably will take a long time figuring out what a plugin is and why do you have to install a plugin? I just want a website, right? So what these people need <laughs> is a um, romantic website. What these people need is a website that is completely geared towards use and specifically their use. Because we can tell, we can tell Mom and Sylvia like. Yes, of course, uh, you do need to know a little bit about motorcycle maintenance before you can actually start working on your site, but it's not that much of a promise. That's never going to work. It's John and Sylvia. They want you. They want to do that and nothing else, right? So what that means is that they need a romantic website in the sense that it's geared towards their needs, very specifically. Besides that, it also needs to be cheap because John and Sylvia are not going to go to an agency, shell out 2500 bucks for a website that does what they need now, um, because they just want to do that, right? And they don't want to do that for, for a while. So what are we going to do about that? Right? We have our romantic website, we know that it should be cheap, so we have a highly specialized website, and we know that that should be cheap. How can you do that? How can you possibly do that? And the way I want to talk about that is basically via, again, then in your motorcycle maintenance. The eventual point I'm going to make is something along the lines of, know your stuff, the user problem. Genius, I know. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's revelatory, I know. Um, but today was in details, right? Because what does properly mean here? And what do, I, what do I mean when I say know your stuff? Well, firstly, let's look at this. This, according to me at least, is sort of a, uh, this is a pretty normal stack, right? This is a normal WordPress stack that <coughs> sort of displays like where the knowledge is, right? You've got your infrastructure, and that infrastructure makes it possible to have WordPress actually running, right? This is your hosting. WordPress actually makes it possible to have a client application, and a client application has some use for the client. It's pretty simple, right? What's interesting about this, I thought, is that those relations sort of have a double meaning, right? These lines, they have a double meaning in exactly the same way that that, that uh, sort of art works, because the infrastructure, the use of the infrastructure is for WordPress to run. WordPress then uses the infrastructure as technological underpinning to actually make itself possible to be of use for a client application. Right? So what that means is that the classic and the romantic sort of come together in each of these relationships. It just depends on the perspective that you look at this stuff. And we'll circle back to that in a bit. Um, what I want to do first though is show you what actually happens if you take websites like these and you scale that up, right? Because this is a pretty normal well stack. Uh, when you have an agency, you'll have a bunch of customers, and uh, what we want to do is we want to try to get that normal agency model to fit into having a romantic website for cheap. Firstly, it will probably look something like this. You've got your client, Using an app, agency has knowledge about that client and therefore can actually build an app, right? And agency needs to have that in a very specific infrastructure. This is way too complex. Um, and the first thing I know you'll also be thinking is, well, yeah, but nobody actually has like that much infrastructure for each of their customers, right? That, that just doesn't really happen. First thing you do uh, to cut costs, but also to 
have this idea of I want to be able to learn stuff, I want to be able to know more stuff about infrastructure, and make that work for everybody, right? As an agency, whenever you learn something new, um, you want that knowledge to be as valuable as possible. How do you do that? By applying it a bunch of time, preferably for payments, right? So the very first thing you do is you unify the infrastructure. You make sure that everything runs from the same server, from the same setup, um, Maybe not the same server per se, but at least the same technical setup. At least the same thing, so you know what you're doing, you learn something new about a load balancer, and everybody's happy about that because some of their websites are attached to it, right? What I want to propose then, basically, is that that same idea, uh, you learn something about your infrastructure, you can actually apply that to everybody all at once, and we should also do that in the client app layer right there. Because the client app layer, this basically is saying that we need to know a lot about this client, right? We need to have intimate knowledge of what they're doing. And from there, we can build them some software that they can then use as their technological underpinning to evolve their company, right? But we as, as, as agencies, like I, I, used to, uh, I, I used to have an agency, and from there uh, came the entirety of Wild Cloud. Um, we need to have that knowledge in order for the client to actually benefit from our software, right? So we're learning a bunch about all of these people. And then the idea becomes like, okay, but can't we just have one client app? Right? that a bunch of different people can use. Because that means that, much like the infrastructure, if I learn something new about these clients, so that means they're each, then I can apply that to everybody, right? Um, that means that I'll be able to provide more value to all of these people uh, all at once. So maybe it's this. Now this is already a lot simpler than before, right? With the, with the nice onion sort of, sort of shape. This is already much nicer because now as an agency, what are we doing? We have knowledge of the client app, we have knowledge of the niche probably, we have knowledge of how certain infrastructure works, and from there, a lot of income is coming from a bunch of different clients. Actually, these words don't really make any sense anymore because we've just built SaaS. That's what this is, right? This is so, what do we do then? So, you know, this, this is, this is that, that knowledge game that we have. Um, to make it a bit more concrete, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, let's say that this SaaS is geared towards uh, e-commerce. It's geared towards, for example, selling clothing. Uh, the clothing industry does a lot of discounts, right? Uh, you've got sales everywhere, and these sales are percentages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Back in December 2022, uh, the Dutch government made a law that said, or so it says, um, that discounts need to work in a certain way because they were trying to combat misleading uh, discount numbers. Basically, what was happening was people were, uh, you know, they had an iPhone, and that iPhone was a thousand bucks. Um, and after the discount, it became 800 bucks. But the first time that this iPhone came out, it was like 1500 bucks. So what did these companies do? They said, here, we have an iPhone, it's 800 bucks, it's like 50% discount, it's amazing, do it now. Um, that is completely misleading, right? Because had you bought it a week before, it would have been a 20% discount. Not cool. It's also what the government thought. So the government then said, um, uh, it's all well and good, but your from price needs to be the lowest price in the last 30 days, right? Well, the first time I actually heard that, I was kind of that, that is a business rule that is super compatible with software. I can build that easily. And when you have a SaaS here that is actually geared towards these people that uh, are at risk of not being compliant suddenly, even if it is a small e-commerce store, in essence, you're not being plotted, right? If you do it wrong, in essence. So what can you do as an agency here, as the, as the builder of SaaS, 
You can actually tell people, uh, so we build in this new feature that makes sure that you're complying to this new law. Um, because we've simply said, like, the software is not going to show you a price that is different from the lowest price in the last 30 days. Simple as that. So now, because the agency learned something about the niche that they serve, all of the customers uh, gain at least a little bit of value. Very important, um, because these people, they're, they're, they're buying a website because they're John and Sylvia, right? They have no idea how any, any of this works. They just know that they need a web presence. So if the agency can pick up the lack of knowledge there and give them something that's in its use, in its romantic way, um, can be the actual underpinning for their, for their company, it's, it's great. Um, from there, you can actually start having a lot of people use this stuff. So why isn't everybody doing this then, becomes the question. Well, um, I mean, building SaaS is kind of hard, right? It's not, a, not an easy endeavor. It's, it's actually quite costly. It, there's a lot, of, a lot of money that needs to go into it, especially if you're doing it from scratch. Um, instead, what might be better is to do it from the perspective of WordPress, right? Uh, we have a 20-year-old ecosystem that solves most of your problems. And as long as you do it in the right way, you can just use WordPress instead of building your own, like actually rolling your own. And, and that's also exactly the vision that Botbot had when we started. Basically, there's a bunch of people out there, uh, the John and Sylvia's of this world, and these people want a website, but they're not going to install WordPress, right? Because installing WordPress and hosting that sounds complicated, nobody really has time for that, etc., etc. And even if they get to it, even if they, you know, have their nephew help if they don't want to buy, if they don't want to buy from an agency, in a year or two they'll have to learn what PHP is. None of that really works. We need to make sure that all of this stuff is provided to them, right? Um, and doing that based on WordPress allows you to use the collective knowledge that's in our ecosystem and build something that works for everyone, right? Building your own page builder is a little bit of a hassle, I can tell you, um, but just using something that's out there from a specialized company, that's amazing. And if you can give that to somebody with your own sort of sauce that makes it even better for your niche, then that's amazing. The problem, though, is with WordPress, at least, um, how are you going to build the infrastructure, right? Because doing this based on just a bunch of random servers, that might fail. Doing it based on multi-site, that's a little bit hard as well. Um, the problem there becomes basically, if you have 2,500 customers, you are mighty successful, but now you have to know a lot about databases in order to not have this whole thing come crashing down. If Anything fails, your 2,500 customers suddenly uh, don't have anything anymore, right? That sort of support sucks. <laughs> so what do you want to do? You want to have something that's, uh, that's scalable. You want to have something that's, uh, 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 that's also scalable in terms of development. And you want to have something that's a little bit cheap. So WildCloud, in that sense, has a Exactly that in 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 uh, envisioned when we started. We want to make sure that people can actually use this 20-year-old ecosystem to build SaaS, build bosses, websites as a service for people who currently have nowhere to go except for very expensive agencies in order to get their website. All in all. I would say that the, the main point of it is that our romantic vision of giving all these people websites, because all of you actually know what these niches do and what these niches need, that can be your technological underpinning to actually give these people those websites that they need. I saw that I still have 10 minutes left, but actually I would love to 
um, answer your questions and maybe discuss even a little bit if that is at all possible. So I'm going to just say thank you very much. Does anybody have a question?